I'm Dave. <laughs> and we have some some the beginning of Halloween miniatures here. It is. We're uh, getting at, spooky. As you, yeah, as you were telling me earlier, it's uh, the first day of Halloween. Yeah, it's the Halloween now is 31 days long. I don't know if you were aware. I don't know if y'all were aware. I wasn't until this morning. I was hoping maybe it was like 46 <laughs> days long. That'd be nice. November 15th <laughs> is when we can finally go, okay, Still cool, we're done. <laughs> <laughs> Two weeks till Turkey Day. I like that. I like yeah. that. That's a good yeah, one. That's where we should go. Okay, cool. Um, so we are going to be painting some, two different minis. So I am going to be painting uh, Pathfinder's Battles uh, from WizKids, uh, the Headless Horseman. Excellent. Headless Horseman from the Deep, yes. Deep Cuts range. Yep. And uh, he looks cool. I like him. I like his horse. I wish I had a horse like he did. <laughs> um, but you have a head. He does not have a head. He has a head. It's in his hand. Okay. It's just removable. It's a function. <laughs> it's, a a, it's a function. It's a feature, not a bug. <laughs> um, and what are you painting? I'm going to be painting the Nightmare Dragon. <laughs> Nightmare Dragon. Uh, so yeah, from also from the Deep Cuts uh, range. Oh, awesome. I was just All saying right. to Gretchen earlier that the paint job on the back here is kind of it's very interesting. It's kind of it's, kind of quirky. It's kind of nightmare-y. Ha, nightmare like, It has a little um, stereotypical you know, colors of of evil. Evil black and red. Yes. Ooh. And crazy uh, translucent frosting down there. Um, but yeah, it's. Uh, Is that not your nightmares? I don't know. It's got a. It's got a kind of. Uh, for me, these colors on a dragon kind of give it a little bit of a like a um, like a Chinese dragon. Hmm. Or oh, actually, no, it's not Wonder Woman. <laughs> oh, we won't mention it, Leona. It never happened. All good. <laughs> it says dragons. <laughs> Excellent. Wizkids Ravensburger. No, nope, there we go. <laughs> We're painting Wizkids stuff. Uh, true. So, uh, but yeah, it's got a, a bit of a sort of an Asian dragon or a, more actually the Kirin, um, which I think is a Japanese mythology. Um, has that kind of feel to it. So I'm going to mess around with that. Um, it has it a probably won't be. tail, which I like. What's that? Yeah, big, big fluffy it's tail. Heavy. It's crazy. It takes away from the nightmare for me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's like he's going to come in and scare you and then tickle you with the yeah, tail. Yeah, I don't. <laughs> Make you laugh. Um, I think it'll be all good. But yeah, guys. Uh, so what have you been painting or what are you going to paint um, now that it's now that it's spooky season? Yes. Hmm. Who do we have in the chat? We've got Michael, we've got Kat, we've got Byron, we've got Roger, we've got uh, Chris, we have uh, Sumki, and uh, we have a Facebook user saying hi all, uh, if you allow... Um, Maybe it's Mark. Button. Mm. Let me do it. Let me do it. Maybe it's Mark Banner. Maybe, it, maybe it's Mark? Yeah. Okay. It might be Mark. But what do we need uh, to get Mark to do so that we can see his name? I Ooh. believe Mark would have to join us through the Facebook chat. Leona knows the answer to that. That's why I asked her. <laughs> There's a reason I for did. that. Oh, no. It's Graham, not Mark. <laughs> it's Graham, okay. It's Graham. Sorry about that. So hey, basically, Graham. you just have to allow Restream to see your profile. Restream. Yes. Restream. So we're not using StreamYard anymore. Um, and yes, it is high noon already, or two o'clock Eastern Standard Time. <laughs> yes. Bless. Uh, Sorry well, for the technical difficulties, everybody. Um, I'm trying to prepare for a fun special episode next week. And uh, so sometimes you just have little audio difficulties. Sometimes it works, sometimes not so much. But we should be set now. So. We're making it work. Yeah. Uh, Excellent. So hello to everyone in the chat. We welcome all chatters. And um, someone mentioned maybe we should have a uh, painting Happy Little Minnie's mom now, like a lunch mom. <laughs> and I think, Kat, that's a, great, that's a great job. You can tell us when we should be using our hol Shh. holders, <laughs> when we should. <laughs> oh, uh, it's not big enough. Sorry, Kat. It won't fit. Yeah, these, these don't quite fit in the holder. They don't fit. It doesn't fit in the holder. 
I think we do have a an extra large one around here somewhere, but uh, we'll work without it. Listen, for today. we're not here to be good influences. <laughs> Just be influences. Just be influences. <laughs> <laughs> we have in influenced you poorly. We've never verified the type of, of advice. Um, well, I suppose it's one of those things that if we help help people with their painting and they get better, then eventually they won't need us anymore. So we work ourselves out of a job. That sounds no, like a terrible thing. That's why it? we stay entertaining. Okay. So we distract people. Yes. <laughs> uh, All good. And yes, happy October 1st to everyone. We're having a good time here we painting are. undead things. <laughs> yeah, the um this nightmare dragon is kind of kind of wild. But I'm going with a um I'm using some uh, contrast paint, Flesh Terror's Red, uh, which is given a, a really nice sort of bloody flayed skin kind of kind of look. So, started off with a gray because I haven't quite figured out if I'm going to go the traditional like scary black horse route with this, or if I want to do something a little different. Okay. I don't know. I think there's um there's a possibility. One of the uh, the questions that um, Leona has posed for us today is um, creating a dark color scheme that isn't muddied. And I think that the the headless horseman is going to be a great one to sort of show that on. I guess then I'm going with a black horse. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, if you it look has at the been back. Decided for me. <laughs> If you look at the paint, like the picture on the back of the thing, right. Gretchen, yeah, it shows like I, a really dark color scheme. It is a dark color scheme. Yeah. And I felt like Halloween in general, like you have a lot of dark color scheme models. Yep. So I thought it would be interesting to kind of talk about how, how do you layer dark colors together? <laughs> <laughs> yep. I think there's, um, there's kind of two, two sort of aspects there that um, we could cover. One would be the, the choice of colors, um, whether you're, you're choosing saturated or desaturated colors. Uh, and um, also where you're applying them, how you're, if you're applying them, uh, if you're putting all of your dark desaturated colors together, it's gonna look a little bit muddled and jumble, uh, jumbled muddied and jumbled um, I think you need to be able to create that, have enough contrast there to still have a dark colour scheme but to be able to um, highlight certain areas um, or put the focus on certain areas of the mini so in the chat um, David Moffat said I have some Ironwind metal battle mechs that are too heavy to stay on my blue tack pots so I went ahead and grabbed both sizes of the GW handle which we do have I'll run and get it for them yep they are useful um oh cat to Dave did you see that our fr that our Fred has his paintings as Ravenbur Ravensburger puzzles I did um so yeah just a quick note on that uh yeah, so sure. Fred Fred Phillips uh, is a, a friend of uh, Kat's and myself and uh, Mel Bowes, the terrain tutor, who I've been working with on uh, the Terrain Essentials book. Uh, Fred Phillips is an awesome artist, uh, paints and oils, and he has a fantastic, like a spectacular understanding of light. <gasps> oh, the extra large. So we'll try and fit this in. But he has a yeah, fantastic understanding of light and his artwork is just um, just amazing to see. Um, and oh, why is that not gonna work? I hope that's gonna stay in. Uh, but uh, yeah, as Kat mentioned, uh, he now has, um, I th I've seen I think at least three, possibly four pieces of artwork on a Ravensburg puzzle, Ravensburger puzzle. So it's like, when I saw that, I was like, this is fantastic. It's awesome. I can't wait to get them into my local store so I can go and pick them up. But uh, yeah, it's definitely cool to, to know somebody who's done artwork who, for, a, uh, for a puzzle. 
That's really cool. Yeah, particularly from a company like the size of Raven's Shout Market. out. Yeah, That's so awesome. awesome. Woo. Jason James says, morning, taught myself how to paint with a broken wrist last night. Oh, geez. I blue tacked my mini to my cats. <laughs> there we I go. Have, I've not had to paint minis with anything broken. Um, I have had to paint. I, I tore everything through my right hand once in college, and it was during art finals. Um, good. Yeah, so I had to <laughs> paint everything with my left hand. Um, fun exercise. Right. I would say go for it and try painting with your non-dominant hand. You might surprise yourself. Yep. Well, I got a, a um, not really funny story, but an amusing, well, not really amusing, but <laughs> an interesting story. At least I, I think so. <laughs> so um, a bad story. You have a bad story. I have a bad story. I have a terrible story. Look away. Uh, <laughs> it's about, uh... The Perry twins, Alan Michael Perry, who are uh, fantastic sculptors, have been sculpting miniatures for 40 years, 30, 40 years, something like that. Um, they are also uh, medieval reenactors. Mm -hmm. uh, and um, they were at a reenactment, and Michael Perry lost his hand. Not like, didn't just leave it behind somewhere. It was blown off in a um, cannon accident. Oh no. Like an exploding, uh, like a exploding blank. Something that went off too early and uh, yeah, it took off his hand. So he, um, that's pretty tough when your, your whole livelihood is based around sculpting miniatures. Um, and this probably happened in like 96, I think. So, but not to be uh, sort of put off by that, he uh, got a uh, prosthesis mm -hmm. and he's unhandy. It blew off his right hand, he's a right handed sculptor, so he got a prosthesis and learned to sculpt with his left hand. Mm -hmm. And his brother, Alan, in um, a show of solidarity, learned to paint with his left hand. So. That's awesome. Yeah, now they're, they're sculpting. I mean, they, they sculpted a lot of the, uh, like, after that accident, uh, Michael's sculpting, like, working hard at, at bringing, getting his sculpting back. It sort of, he got his sculpting mojo back and sort of went above and beyond as well and did a lot of the, uh, the early uh, Lord of the Rings sculpts hmm. from Games Workshop and uh, wow. a lot of character work as well. So he, so he was actually able to sculpt with... Um, with his left hand, sculpt faces, recognizable faces. So you go. Also, That's I wanted to say hi to uh, Sean Gleason and also Carl. Thanks for joining. And Graham. Cool. Graham asked, "Do these figures come already primed?" Uh, they do. All of the uh, the Wiz Kids uh, deep cuts and um, Knowles's marvelous miniatures uh, come pre-primed. With a um, Vallejo primer, just like, yep. So they're primed, ready to paint out of the box. It'll say on the check the card there. But yep. So yeah, we uh, didn't have to do any These priming. Are straight out of the box. And and by we, I mean Leona didn't have to do any priming today. Yes, it was very nice. <laughs> uh, Jason said he had a spill at work where he broke his wrist in three places. Oh. So lots of downtime. Well, I'm glad you're able to figure out mini painting. Yeah, it's a good that's time. not good. Uh, okay. Oh, and Thomas said, "What if painting with my left hand looks like with I, what looks like what I paint with my non-dominant hand?" Which I think is the scary question. You know what I mean? All like, right. What, what, if if your norm, what if your dominant hand? Painting looks the same as your non-dominant. <laughs> then you're set. That's then absolutely you're set. fine. Yeah. <laughs> then you're just you're aware of your yep. amazing skills. You know, you know it. I ambidextrous. It's awesome. Or <laughs> yeah, I, you're ambidextrous. It's amazing. <laughs> also, real I, quick, sorry, Gretchen. Before we jump to oh, you, you're fine. Roger Moore had a question about paint, and he's asking what color you're using for your red. Oh, okay, Dave. yes, it, it is. Uh, it is contrast paint. It is the flesh terror's red. 
So it's the there are two um, two red paints in the contrast range: the Blood Angels red and the Flesh Terrors red. Flesh Terrors the darker of the two. But Gretchen. Oh, were I was to just going to say when I had to paint everything with my non-dominant hand, at first it was really, really, really hard. Uh, but then I found out if I just took my time and got kind of like more loose with it, I actually was able to come up with some really cool styles. It was cool. Just gotta, just gotta believe in yourself. <laughs> awesome. I think it is just that it's a it's kind of a, a matter of how how much you want to do the thing yeah and lots of practice like i'm sure with uh the perry brothers oh he yeah just, he just like probably practiced so much yeah yeah definitely also yes some key i do see your your um great oh. puns yes. i just haven't acknowledged <laughs> them yet yes yeah, so that story does sound like it got out of hand uh-huh uh, yes. Uh, <laughs> sadly. <laughs> cool. Oh, Roger Moore said, I have the Blood Angels red, which he really likes. So he yep. just used it on one of the Scythe minis. Oh, cool. Which is awesome. Excellent. That's very good. Very cool. Yeah, let us know what you guys have been painting uh, in the comments. We are always interested to hear different works in progress and stuff like that. Yep. People have been posting up some really nice work in the group. Yeah, there's been some great stuff. Um, I mean, I'm looking forward to, uh, to seeing the pictures that you've uh, chosen this week. There's a great, um, great banner as well for October. Oh, I just had a thought. What was your thought? Um, and I know that at some point during the show we're going to talk about prompt Toba. Yes. Um, perhaps the minis for the November banner can be from the prompt Toba stuff. Oh, I like that. That could work. That could I think that would work great. Yeah. Excellent. So I guess leading into that, prompt Tober. Prompt Toba. Okay. <laughs> Um, so last year we did a bit of stuff with Inktober and the idea that you do prompts throughout the entirety of the month and try to get creative. And last year we were kind of like, man, how do we use this for minis? Um, yep. really good idea. And so we decided to do Promptober and every week we are going to put out a prompt for mini painting. And it's going to be hopefully something vague enough to uh, allow everyone to use materials they have at home, uh, but prompty enough to where uh, there's a a theme. Yep. Um, and then every I like the the theme is has to be prompty enough. Prompty enough. <laughs> <laughs> That's a word. Not a, not only to be a theme, but to be sufficiently prompting to uh, uh, <laughs> for people to want to participate. A, a theme I feel like you have to find the balance, like, you sure. know, either oh, yeah, like a yeah. color theme or a, a type of mini, but something where we don't have people having to run out to their friendly local game store in the middle of quarantine. Um, <laughs> but every week we'll put up this prompt and then um, hopefully you guys will uh, participate and paint something and then post it up with hashtag Promptober, Promptober, for the, the <laughs> no, you said it right the first yeah, time, I'm sure. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> um, and okay. you'll put it up and in the Painting Happy Little Minis Facebook group. And then from those um, minis or bases or, you know, what have you that are done up, uh, Leona is going to choose a winner for a giveaway. Mm -hmm. So we are, we, are gonna, we are kicking off the holiday season really strong. We are indeed. Uh pretty much the goal here I think it's a good uh, I think it's a great goal and then we're going to there's going to be a Facebook post in the group that Leona's going to put up so um keep an eye out for that yeah keep an eye out for that that'll go a little bit more into detail of uh the wins and the posting things and 
what the first prompt is, which brings me to my next thing. Hey, chat. What do you think the first prompt should be? <laughs> <laughs> I love that we can just we can crowdsource it all. <laughs> uh, we don't have to do any work. <laughs> my job is to paint minis. <laughs> <laughs> um, Excellent. That's good. It, it is a good question though. What I I know that I would go for the the sort of stereotypical Halloween ones. It yeah. might be like pumpkin. <laughs> or ghost or other dull things like that see and I'm more of the type to where I'm like oh you know it's easy like color schemes like what's a spooky color scheme right you know. so let's see what people want to paint yeah I thought it would be kind of just a fun way to get people excited about painting and then also um Give some stuff away. So yep. uh, we do have some people talking in the chat. <gasps> um, I didn't know if you wanted to. Sure. Uh, Shout out to people who've been working based. on stuff. Nope. The yeah. winner will not be skill based. It will be probably randomly generated out of the people who submit stuff. Yep. Uh, we don't do skill based things because everyone in the show is equally skilled. Even if they don't believe it. <laughs> um, and it's activity we're after. Yeah, activity. we just we want people to have fun. We don't want people to feel like they they have to hit a certain mark or anything. Yep. So it, it's definitely gonna be like you post it up, you show it off, we'll show it off, um, and then from the people who participate, we will um, we'll do it like a drawing kind of thing. Yep. So when uh, Gretchen says Leona will will pick a winner. It's like, there are 20 entries, or she'll roll a dice. Or she'll roll 20. a dice. Uh, but uh, yeah, exactly that kind of thing. Cool. Um, David Moffat says he's been building a bajillion 15 mil tanks. Mostly Battlefront, but some Svesta too. Dang. Cool. A bajillion. A bajillion. It's quite a lot. Where do you store them? I, I think you build your house out of them. You build your If you have a bajillion. <laughs> I could be wrong. Amazing. It might be a mansion. It might be a mansion. You do minutes. what I do with dinosaurs, <laughs> and you just strategically place them in each room so that people don't really notice them at first. But the longer they're in your house, the more they begin to notice the hidden dinosaurs. <laughs> oh, right. You just walk through David Moffat's house, and there's just tanks everywhere. <laughs> there's yeah. like a bathroom-themed tank. I mean, a bathroom. Uh, the tank themed bathroom. <laughs> <laughs> no, but that's the best part. I've had so many people come into my house and just be like, oh, it's so cute. It's like cute little girly yeah. home. And then the more they stay, the more like, oh, oh, cute, a dinosaur. And then, oh, cute, another dinosaur. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God, I'm in Jurassic World. <laughs> is that a three foot tall velociraptor? <laughs> Why, yes, it is. It stays on my couch. That's the way to go. That's the way to go. Roger Moore had said um, that he was done with Scythe, Scythe, excuse me, yeah. but he's pondering the Winds Gambit's airships or going on to John Carter. So. Okay. I think John Carter. I'm going to say John Carter. Nice. You should do that. Totally. That sounds fun. Um. Graham is working on some of the M MDF buildings. Cool. Weathering and adding details. Uh, Roger Moore said, how many minis are we looking at painting for the month then? A bajillion. A bajillion, nah. yes. yes. So David Moffin has a head start, especially if one of our prompts is tanks. <laughs> I feel like we have to do that now. <laughs> no, we don't have to do that. We don't have to. Um, we could, but we don't have to. But, uh, yeah, I think um, uh, one, minimum one for one of the prompts. Yeah. Um, we'll probably provide uh, three or four or five prompts, something like that. Every Thursday, we'll just shoot one out. Yep, sounds um, like a plan. But uh, yeah, you don't have to. You won't have to paint something for every prompt. We're not too demanding, or any slightly demanding. <laughs> Again, it's supposed to be a for funsy thing, uh, a a a challenge if you want it, an idea if you like it. Um, 
Yep. Not a stressful event. It should not. If it's stressful, <laughs> you're doing it wrong. Stop. <laughs> yep. Exactly. Chris oh. says tanks is reserved for Thanksgiving. <laughs> yes. Yes, it is. <laughs> That's incredible. We'll save that. We so, need a Thanksgiving now. So make sure you're ready for that, uh, Mr. Moffat. Cool. Thomas Roach uh, thinks we are into the macabre. Macabre. Uh, an undead mini. Cool. Oh, Sean Gleason is working on a Warlord Titan. Sean, I need to know. Is that <laughs> 40k scale or Adeptus Titanicus scale? Dun dun dun. Some the real will ask, question. What's the difference? Tell us the difference. About 12 pounds. Of, mini. of money or weight? Uh, mini. Okay. Mini. About 1,200 pounds of money. But, uh, yeah, the um, Adeptus Titanicus uh, Warlord Titan stands about, um, let me turn it up there. It's oh, probably about no. that tall. Okay. And the Warhammer 40,000 from is probably about that tall. Too big. So from there to there. That's not a mini. No, that's the bigger chair. <laughs> But yeah, so I need to know. I haven't painted the Adeptus Titanicus Warlord Titan yet. I've painted the, uh, the other size. Sean, tell us. What tell us, Titan Sean. is it? I need to know. Also, hello um, to Zabirum. Thanks for joining. Cool. Oh, uh, Adeptus Tyke Titanicus. <laughs> Carl said, <laughs> oh, cool, excellent, thanks, thanks, Sean. Carl says, ooh, I'm as good at being ra randomly selected as anyone. <laughs> <laughs> it's one of my skills, too. <laughs> I have that, I have that going for me. Um, I never win those kinds of things. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Roger Moore says that he likes that idea, Gretchen. The living room is, is like that, actually, with dinosaurs placed everywhere. Carl says, a tank-themed bathroom? Honey, I have to hit the turret. Graham <laughs> <laughs> okay. yeah. says, I'm currently in my, painting, uh, in my painting space, a tiny space totally surrounded by boxes of minis. Storage sorted. Chris says, how about a Victorian theme for the first go? Ooh. Is that Victorian the time frame or Victorian the, uh, Victoria the state in Australia? Uh, I'm just gonna. I'm gonna say the time frame is yep. probably more okay. Skinny. We're not very Aussie centric around here. I'm sorry. It's disappointing. <laughs> disappointing. <laughs> I'm telling you, but uh, no, that's fair enough. Um, thanks for reserve for Thanksgiving. Oh, David Moore says you guys have it easy. Canadian Thanksgiving is only twelve days away. That's fair. I know. I lived on the border and the border was open right now. I would certainly enjoy both Thanksgivings. Without a doubt. Just like eating. Hmm? So just like eating. Yeah. I do. Delicious foods. Lots and lots of delicious food. But no, that's good. <laughs> he said, I'm thankful for every day. <laughs> oh, Spider-Man's here. Not a problem, Hello, Spider -Man. hello, and welcome. You can be as late as you need to be. Yes, Chris, I agree. Australia is an awfully scary place. Like, instead of a haunted house, we should just have Australia. A haunted backyard. It's just a Oscar. haunted backyard. I, uh, my boyfriend likes to tell the story of a guy he knew who was stationed in Australia who had a cassowary um, enter his home. Oh, wow. Uh, he had left his door open. <laughs> well, I mean. Uh, and then it became the cassowary's home rather quickly. <laughs> yeah, for sure. I mean, that's on the guy, obviously. You don't just go around leaving your, <laughs> leaving your house open well, to. You, that's how you know he wasn't native Australian. <laughs> right, yep, yeah, exactly. You close those doors <laughs> and you double check them. <laughs> One of the things I'm having a lot of fun with uh, on this mini at the moment is 
So I started with the uh, flushed hair as red, um, over the the wings and the floofy tail, and uh, down the back of the dragon there. And now uh, if I've painted the tail, started painting the tail black, and now I'm working it up into the body by mixing the black into the flushed terrors red. And I'm not doing it in any sort of planned sort of gradation, but rather just um, sort of messing around with it on the skin to have some, ver uh, some variation there. So I've started with the horse and I am Attempting, I have a very, very dark midnight blue kind of color. Um, and I am going in and filling in some of the shadows and kind of just working it out to the gray where the, uh, try to get a very smooth kind of blend. Right. Um, where to bring out the musculature that's the words i'm looking for right. <laughs> um and then i'm gonna go in with the black for the deepest part of the shadows and then on the uh on the face i put i did first some yellow to kind of block where i wanted some glowy eyes and hopefully i won't destroy that uh, <laughs> we'll see. I don't know. I haven't really tried doing much glowy things before. Okay. Uh, but I wanted to try a little bit more of it. That's cool. Uh, make it kind of ethereal. So I think having a, a very, very subtle blue tinge to that black will make a yellow glowy stand out more because it'll be a cooler black. Okay. Those are opposite color. Well, not full opposite colors on the uh, color wheel, but near opposite colors on the color wheel. Yeah. And there'll be some orange in there too. I must admit, I thought maybe you'd be going for uh, some purple. I thought about it, but really dark indigo blue is my favorite color. Okay, <laughs> that's cool. Um, so I'm switching it up. Gretchen, some key says you must tread carefully. <laughs> Excellent. Okay. Some of these legs are kind of tough to get to on this, uh, this many because of the, of the translucent swirling around the bottom here. So let me get try and get the right angle on that. There we go. Yeah, there's a lot of that. Yeah, he's kind of standing on clouds. What are those? A, are? I'm not sure they're exactly what it's supposed to be. Oh, they're your nightmare. It's nightmare fuel. Yeah, maybe it is. What well, What are you planning? What do you think you're going to paint that, Dave? Uh, I'm going to leave the this um, clear. Oh, okay. Uh, and I am going to sort of reach through and try and paint the um, kind of like a gray sort of stone base underneath it. Um, something fairly desaturated so that the um, the red stands out a little bit more. Nice. Pops a little bit from the... And Gretchen, uh, does yours have a clear piece? Uh, it has a clear piece keeping the horse up, uh, but it's that's just going to stay clear. It's not part of the, the sculpt, so to speak. It's just helping the horse stand. Oh, okay, yeah. Yep. Yeah. Because with the uh, the PVC, if it didn't have that, the, the horse would, would have a tendency to sort of droop forward. Gotcha. Apparently, some key says it isn't nightmare fuel; it's just hay. The headless just horseman hay. knows. <laughs> okay. How can he know when he's headless? These are the real he's questions. His head. They are the real questions. <laughs> they are the questions that need to be asked. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. Kat has pointed out that nobody is stopping me from celebrating both Thanksgivings. Nope. No one is stopping me. This is true, Kat, but I, to be honest, I really like it when other people organize stuff. 
<laughs> All right, David Moffat, you got to send us a full Thanksgiving dinner. Thank you. <laughs> Canadian style. Yep. P.O. Box. No, I'm just <laughs> <laughs> Okay, for the, um, for the gray, I'm just mixing some. I'm gonna slide. I'll, I'll zoom. I'll zoom out. Oh, okay. Actually, yeah, you, you're going to need to. I'm going to need to move it. Yeah. Yep. There we go. Uh, so I've got some uh, coal black from Prime 2 Press there, um, which is one of my favorite uh, colors to mix into things. So it's kind of a, a bluish green. I've got a little bit of uh, light gray from Vallejo and some uh, black the mixing in there, just to give that a little bit of a sort of bluish greenish tint to the, to the gray, which will work well against the, the red of the dragon. So now I can just get in there. Now, where are you putting that? So I'm painting that on the... Um, oh, on the base. On the base. So, yeah. Rather than leaving the base, um, that sort of the, the pale gray. So it's going to be a lot of fun. A lot of uh, me sort of concentrating hard at getting into those little details and training not to get it onto the clear sections. I've given myself a task, quite a task. But you get that. And again, because it's um, it's kind of a stone base, it's going to have some natural variation. So it doesn't, each time I mix up my um, bluish greenish gray I don't have to really worry about getting it exactly the same as I had it before you can mix a little bit of more gray in mix a little bit more <laughs> whatever David Moffat says um, whenever my Swedish mother-in-law has guests from abroad she serves a Thanksgiving dinner which is incredible <laughs> excellent <laughs> I just imagine it's like high summer and she's just like, here's Thanksgiving. I'd be fine with that. Which is not bad. I did have pumpkin pie in August. Yeah. The, and it was probably more delicious than when I eat it in Thanksgiving. Right. Here's something. I'm, I'm not sure how many other people do this, but um, my wife... Uh, Around around this time, gets um, a couple of cans of. Um, oh, and my earpiece has just popped out of my ear. I have an earpiece in so that I can hear Leona <laughs> when she's talking. Um, so yeah, uh, she gets a couple of cans of um, pumpkin, um, like pumpkin pie filling, I guess. Yeah. Uh, and mixes it with uh, cream cheese. Okay. And then we get, uh, and then. Cake? A bag of ginger ginger snaps, uh -huh. and just that sounds really yep. good. Oh wow! I'd eat that. It it is fantastic. That sounds delicious. I have an idea for instead of doing normal cinnamon rolls, doing pumpkin pie filling cinnamon rolls. Okay. With cream cheese frosting. That'd be cool. Sounds I good. I think that sounds oh. really tasty. Um. I think you should definitely do it. You're talking about doing it and like bringing it in for us, right? <laughs> well, I guess now maybe. <laughs> now that I've mentioned it. Yeah. Everyone um, in the chat needs to comment <laughs> so that we, Dave and I, can get Gretchen's <laughs> big I'm just joking. Chris says Dave will be working on his brine recipe for the next month to prepare. Oh, <laughs> Possibly, I'm not sure. I'm not sure where we're having uh, Thanksgiving this year. Some key says only if we get a piece of the pie. Ah. <laughs> cool. Some key, if you paint every prompt, we will send you a pie. <laughs> exactly. Leona, Dave will I send hope you, you a realize, pie. realize, but you just promised. The owner will send you a pie. Dave will send you. A pie. How about Johnny? Johnny will Johnny send. Johnny will send. Johnny will send you a pie. pie. That'll be good. If you submit to every giveaway, Johnny will send you a pie. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder if Johnny's watching anymore. Yeah. 
See, we can what? say anything now. Oh, Johnny will do this. Johnny will do that. He hasn't burst open the door, so I'm guessing he isn't watching at the moment. <laughs> He's gone. <laughs> Gretchen, I'm really enjoying that dark blue on the on the hair. Yeah, yeah it's, it's the very. Horse. Um, it's actually the the dark blue with a little bit of yellow right now that I'm attempting to blend. Um, kind of reminds me of Starry Night. Yes, it does. <laughs> Reminds you of what? A uh, Starry Night. Okay. The uh, oh, the painting. the Van Gogh. Yeah. Or Van Gogh. The Van, Van Gogh. Gogh, as they say in Britain. Van Gogh. I have no idea how to say it. Well, I have several ideas on how to say it, but. I've been to the Van Gogh Museum in uh, Amsterdam. Yeah. Would recommend if you ever get the chance. Excellent. It was amazing. Also, did you see that movie that they made? Uh, I have not what? seen it, but I am aware of it. Do you know what movie yeah. I'm talking about? Yep. I have no idea what you're talking okay, about. Okay, so it's right. actually really cool. Gretchen, you probably would enjoy this. They painted, they made an animated movie, um, but yeah. they used, each frame was uh, an impressionistic painting, like Van Gogh style, and it kind of just morphs in between, but they basically painted every frame. Yeah. The, that's really um, cool. That had, would be so much work. It had, was like, a lot of work. It took they many had, like, years. Thousands <laughs> of people. Thousands of people working on it. Carl says I'm pretty sure Van Gogh is a Klingon dish. <laughs> Van Gogh. <laughs> His dish best served piping hot. So it burns you. Yeah. I know that Van Gogh episode of Doctor Who. It's a good oh, one. Oh man, that gets everyone every time. It's a good one. I don't think I've seen that. Just look up the clip. Okay. It's just sad. Look up the clip and be sad. <laughs> but like in a good way. Okay. <laughs> sad in a good way? Yes. Great. I'll wait until I'm really happy before I do it. Oh my goodness. I realize I've been pressing a mute button to mute myself and it's been doing nothing. So that's okay. a good time. <laughs> I just needed awesome. to tell everyone that. <laughs> it's a new audio setup. It's all good. Yeah. Would you guys like to look at some uh, minis from the group? Uh, yes. Yes. You know we're always interested. Oh, Jason said it brought tears to my eyes. Same. It's a good episode. Shout out to Doctor Who. Okay, so every week I choose minis from the Painting Happy Little Minis group. And um, we're going to take a moment to look at them now. Let's do that. It's fun and exciting time over there. So Ooh. first we have Ashen Leaf Paintworks. And this is a heraldy of Ast Astartes? The Astartes, yeah. Thank you. The Invictus. This is a, um, this is a really old uh, Space Marine mini. Like really old, like millennia ago before gretchen was born oh, okay that means it was before leona was born too that is before the gretchen and leona <laughs> were born fact. <laughs> yep <sighs> you, you, you <laughs> make fun of me dave but you forget i'm older I, than leona this was even a couple of uh this was even a couple of years before i got into the hobby so um but no this is very cool um purple's always a tough color to work with and um, I think Ashen Leaf Paintworks here has done a, a great job with this purple. It looks nice and, and clean and shiny. It's a very does this model just not have arms? Is that just a thing? Um, no, it does. Uh, it's just really sort of tough to see on this particular angle. So, um, oh, okay. If it to look just to the it's like to the size of the head, or the shoulder pads, and they're kind of up. Oh, like there that. we go. I see them. I see and, them. On his right side, uh, the, the miniature's right side, he's holding a pistol, sort of next, close to his body. 
Oh yeah, uh, um, like Spider Man says I think he's going through all the chapters with the older minis. Yeah, which I think is true. Yep, yep. I think this is really cool. But yeah, he's got his got his hand up like that. Yeah, I see that now. And then the backpack that has is kind of standing back off his off his back. It's not up sort of close like a more modern Space Marine would look like. But uh, no, this is this is very cool. Nice work. Very good. Next. Sir, Chris Cox with the WizKids Deep Cuts transforma- Transformers, Transformers Minis. Excuse me. Yeah, very okay. cool. That's uh, Soundwave, isn't it? I think it's Soundwave. I don't sure. know. I'm pretty sure. Because I only know two Transformers. I have friends <laughs> who would know. There we yep, go. Yep, Spider-Man says Soundwave. Thank yep. you. Definitely cool. I'm sad that I haven't like seen these minis in person. I need to reach out to WizKids to have them send me some. Yeah, definitely. Because be super cool if we get them somehow Starscream. we must have missed we them. Star Scream. Yes. <laughs> nice. I only know so many. This is true. <laughs> like, what are the ones I know? What are the ones I've uh, after Soundwave and uh, Bumblebee and Optimus Prime? I'm, yeah. I start to run short. But yeah. uh, but no, very cool. And then there's that Panther one. Oh, that's when you get uh, into the, the Beast ones. Oh, okay. I guess yeah. that's, that's what I'm thinking That's a different uh, series. Well, it's still Transformers. It's just the Transformers. It's not. They're not Autobots or Decepticons. They're supposed to be, like, older, I think. Like, they, they see. I, I forget how. I remember. Yes, the Ravage. It was a cassette from Soundwave. Oh, right. Okay. Yeah. It, like, Yeah. And also, the, it go. says Starscream is the best one. So. <laughs> you have some awesome. agreement in there. And apparently yeah. Dinobots? Yes, Dinobots. Dinobots. I remember Dinobots. Yep. Surprise. Gretchen. Yeah, so I was going to say. <laughs> Surprise. I remember the It's like half, half, of that fr- half of that word is, is like right in your wheelhouse, <laughs> um, I, I And it's not bots. bits and pieces <laughs> not the, the cartoons um, in the different cartoons whenever I was like a small child, a wee lass. And I remember the dinosaurs. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and I only remember like bits and pieces of the canon. Right. Uh, which I always think is funny when I look back on, like, if you look back on anything that you liked as a kid and then, but, like, can't fully remember. Oh, yeah, yeah. But you remember sure. pieces of it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, no, there, there are a ton of different shows that I remember incredibly fondly. And uh, whenever I've had the misfortune to see them again, it's been like, Miss that's Morgan. not what I remember. See, I like rewatching that stuff. <laughs> no, I'm that, a weirdo. That's because you're not old enough yet. That's true. To have completely forgotten exactly That's what they were fair. about and only have a, a memory of a fond memory of something that never was that's <laughs> man I feel well good right. job chris we enjoyed yes so much. We're now <laughs> going, back, going back to sound wave <laughs> now that we've had our perfect. existential crisis for the show <laughs> perfect yeah yeah cool. also we have some love from the in the chat for um transformers so yeah definitely. I, I think we should <laughs> definitely need to have them on the show i think that's the what I gleaned from that. I, w- I would agree. I would agree. Chris Hood with the cultist finished. That's I'm, looking very cool. Uh, I don't know. He didn't say what this miniature was from, but I really liked this sculpt. Yeah. I don't know why. <laughs> Just I've seen a lot of cultist minis because I'm in to the Mansions of Madness, like Arkham Horror stuff. Right. And they yeah. have a lot of them. But this one is really nice. It is very cool. I, I don't know where the mini's from either, but... Uh, no, it's, it is very cool. I wonder if it's... Um, I don't think it is. There's a few few sort of design cues in there that are making me think that maybe it's early early uh, Warhammer. But there are a couple others in there that make me think, no, nah, not so much. But um, Oh, Chris has a good point. Robo- robots or cults are good themes too oh, yeah. for, our, uh, for our prompt-tober. This is true. Uh-huh. I yeah. like that. Yeah, remember, if you think of a prompt, throw it out there, because we're going to be coming up with the first one. Yep, I'm going to throw out the first one this afternoon. But, uh, yeah, uh, great work, Chris. I'm, I'm really enjoying this uh, This guy. He looks looks excellent. I love the um, the highlighting on the, on the hood. Very nice work. Oh, Spider-Man said it could be a 3D print from the Frostgrave line. Okay. Or David Moffat said it could, it might be a Fireforge cultist. Right, it could be. But no, it looks really good. 
Very nice. Chris Sheen with some Marines. I painted Marines. Ooh. I don't know which chapter these are from, but uh, so these are the Assault Intercessors from uh, the uh, Indomitus release box that they did for the new edition of Warhammer 40,000. That nice, good cobalt blue. Yep. It is very cool. But uh, yeah, the having the, the helmets in that um, gold sort of color and the, the white shoulder pads, I can't quite see the the chapter symbol there on the side, but uh, I'm hoping this is one that Chris has created himself because it looks really, uh, really cool, very nice. And I think um, the the bases mm -hmm. having that um, sort of the rusty kind of look on there just works really well with that blue. It's a nice callback to the um, the shoulders and the uh, yeah, yeah, it's got a great the connection there. Yeah, and the the uh, holsters for the guns. But yeah, nice work, Chris. These look cool. Cornish, Cornish Mikey, Mikey painting a few undead from other world miniatures. I think that's probably a little bit of a hint that if over the next four weeks, four or five weeks, you paint, post up some undead miniatures, <laughs> Leona may be more inclined to pick those. Um, it but actually yeah. was just chance, like they just put them up and I <laughs> picked them. But yes, if you yep. paint Halloween themed <laughs> minis, <laughs> I will. Because like last week, um, Fernie had that pumpkin guy yep. and I loved it. So I definitely was going to show it. I almost wanted to show it again. Yep. Because I loved it we so much. We just like Halloween season. <laughs> um. <laughs> Spooky, scary skeletons. Yes. Yep. Indeed. But no, I, I love these. I think these are great. Um, the, the sort of skin tone there. Mm -hmm. uh, lovely gray with a slightly greenish tinge to it. But there's still a little, there's a little hint of pink in there. Um, looking very cool. Those eyes, the green glowing eyes there on the, um, the one on our left. Mm -hmm. Just look uh, very cool. No, I think Cornish Mikey's done a great job. Yeah. Very nice. Excellent work. Oh, Don. Don Slater has been painting up uh, Dust 1947 Wotan. Wotan 2. But, mm. uh, nice weathering. Yeah. Yeah, the weathering's great, isn't it? Lots of excellent chipping. And one of the things as well is those big, those larger patches of chipping there around the um, like near the faction symbol and at the at the front there the chipping is in areas where you'd expect to find it sort of mm -hmm. along the edges and it's not um, anywhere else it's, it's a little bit more random sometimes um, you find people will, will do some chipping in an area and they go okay do some here I'll do some here and then they try and space it out fairly evenly and so you end up with a look that that means you don't have um kind of a consistency oh sorry you have a consistency where you shouldn't have it it looks not random at all but i think don's done a great job here with that weathering getting a nice random a random look to it but yeah nice work don Jeff. Good high even. Fantastic. I think, uh, yeah, it was a few weeks ago now that, uh, that we saw the work in progress. Yeah, this is uh, very cool. It has that um, sort of baboon slash sort of mandrel kind of. Yes. Um, look to it or feel to it. But uh, it looks very cool. I think... Um, one of the things that sort of was disconcerting me for a, for a second was that you can see the you've got a hand up the top of the the staff, and then two hands a little bit lower down, and then there's one hanging off to the side as well. And I realized, of course, those two hands in the middle are feet, <laughs> the, the feet that are also hands. But uh, no, Jeff, I think you've done a great job here. The uh, very creepy. <laughs> But uh, I, I'm sure that sort of as you turned around, you'd see that sort of fairly clearly what was going on. 
but uh, no, I love I love it. I love the uh, the orange robes, um, that bright yellow, really just sort of drawing your attention directly to the face. Uh, very cool. Nice work. Oh, Mick. German. Yep. I have a feeling that might be uh, 170 second scale. Possibly. Uh, but yeah, this this looked really cool. Um, yeah, taking parts from a different parts from different places and jamming them all together to make something uh, super cool like a Weird War 3, a Weird War 2 sort of uh, jet bike. It looks great. And I think that um, having the Yep. Right. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. There's a very cool, um, there's a, co a game, um, I can't remember exactly what it's called, but it's something along the lines of like Mad Maximilian, and it's uh, sort of set in the, the 30s. Um, but it's it's a, vehicular racing slash combat game so it's like Mad Max but it's um, all sort of quirky later than steampunk but before diesel punk kind of um, contraptions but uh, yeah I think this would fit in just perfectly with that but you're right the, the, the flames like yellow flames on a red red bike <laughs> they can always look cool yeah Nice work. Oh, hooray! Do you recognize that zombie ogre? <laughs> That's the one I painted. Who got yours? Do you remember? Uh, who had mine, Leona? Uh, I'm not sure. John Miller. Oh, cool. John Miller needs to send us a photo as well, or at least pop one on the, on the group. But yeah, excellent. Because Leona's mic is off muted. There I can go. hear you on. I can I'm hear here you on now. <laughs> John Miller, I think, got the la the, the other one. So okay. send us a picture. We'll showcase your beautiful, f funny face, smiling Excellent. face. I mean, smiling face. <laughs> Mike's face is a bit funny. Picture pending. Okay, fair. cool. <laughs> oh, okay, cool. Mike with a vision of undead ice dragon. This is from Bones Four. Yeah, this is a uh, very cool as well. Sorry, cool was the un <laughs> that was an unintentional pun. Sorry, didn't mean to step on anybody's Some toes. Key. You, you lost <laughs> it. You missed it. Missed it. Well, but uh, but no, this looks uh, this looks super cool. Um, I just love that. Uh, is it just that pale blue, like oh, the almost white um, sort of coloration to the um, to the dragon. It just looks, looks perfect. almost textured and frost. Yep. Yep. And I think the uh, Mike was saying that uh, he used uh, crystals in the eyes Ooh. to create those um, to the glowing blue eyes. But uh, yeah, looking very cool. That's awesome. Oh, Jeff's in the chat. Says my angle on the photo of uh, Katai is a bit off. The glare was giving the model a weird shine. Yeah, sometimes it can be super tough to um, to get exactly the right angle on a model. I think most angles, uh, most models, sorry, have like just that the golden angle. It's just that perfect place <laughs> that you can turn it, and it's everything like, looks nice. Everything looks perfect. Yeah. But then there are some models where there is no. There are so many angle. times I go to take a picture of a model, and um, no matter which way I turn it, it just doesn't look the same as it does in real life. Yep. <laughs> and there's some that look better in photographs than they do in real life, and I'm like, oh, okay. Yep, that that's it which works is sometimes. You'll never know. But uh, yeah, some of the other photos that um, the Mike's got up of this uh, look very cool as well. There are a couple of um, skeleton warriors sort of working around the the dragon. But no, looks very cool. Nice work, Mike. Good one. Nate with the Goliath mini for Echo Knight. Echo Knight. I did see this, and I love the um, 
And when I first saw it, I thought that the the green sort of part was uh, like an axe, some sort of energy, sort of um, magical power axe. But I could be, I might be wrong. It might be like a sort of just a sort of energy, magical element sort of tailing off. But uh, somebody who knows this mini will need to let me know. But uh, no, it's looking very cool. I like the, um, I really enjoy the skin tone there. That sort of um, dark, sort of deep gray kind of look. It's looking good. I think it's a, a great choice as well then for the uh, the color for the fur. It's looking nice. Oh, these were orcs, are they? I think they're um, they're orcs. Orctober. For October, <laughs> hooray! Good job, Nate. Yep. Maybe he did it for that reason. Maybe not. Maybe not. I don't know. Maybe just want to try out the the the, the orc skin there. Could be it. But yeah, nice work, Nate. Color. It looks great. All right. That's it for now. Okay, cool. Is that okay? Yeah, absolutely fine. Back to painting. Back to painting. Gretchen, tell us where you are at. So I am adding a black wash over my super dark blue to so that it will fall into all the deepest shadowy bits because I want the horse to read as only just barely kind of blue. I want it to predominantly read black, but have that kind of ethereal, like, oh man, that is definitely not normal. It's definitely not a normal horse. Don't even think about the weird dude on the back holding his own head. <laughs> um, kind of vibe to it. So I am going through with the black wash so that it situates. And this sculpt does a pretty good job at uh, having enough of a recess where the muscles are to where it's gonna pool into that, uh, into those divots and really make the horse look dynamic, hopefully. Um, I'm not being super tidy around the feet because uh, this is gonna be a dark color when I'm done and uh, only mildly tidy around the, the horse's tack, like the bridle and stuff because uh, that's relatively light, and I'll be coloring that something, some kind of leather color. Uh, probably a warm, dark brown, so that it stands out. Um, I have a little bit of yellow here on the tail that I've blended out rather smoothly. That looks uh, on its own pretty cool, but hopefully what that's going to look like when I'm done is I want his head to look kind of glowy, because it's a spirit head. Thing. Cool. Um, so maybe that'll work. Uh, and of course, his eyes are also going to be glowy. So to get that glow, um, what I did was I blended out. First, I put down kind of a mid-range yellow where I wanted the glow to be because I wanted to be careful with the darker colors so that I didn't muddy them since they are two opposite colors on the color wheel. Um, I didn't want to get green by accident. Um, and then I very slowly blended up the edges of the, uh, very dark blue to where it would meet the yellow. And then I very slowly blended out the yellow back, uh, starting with the darkest. And then as I got in towards the eye, uh, that became, um, the white and super high contrast so that it looks like it's blowing, glowing. Sorry. Gretchen has a dissertation on how she's chosen her colors. <laughs> I have horses be brown. <laughs> as someone who worked as a stable hand for 10 years, um, I might have opinions <laughs> on horse colorations. Um, there is technically a color called blue on a horse. Fun fact. It's called a blue roan. And it is the same coloration, uh, same not the same genetic makeup that makes the coloration, but the same fur pattern that happens genetically as uh, blue merles in like herding dogs. Um, I don't know how many people. That's are... really cool. My neighbor has blue merles. Yeah. She loves okay. Them one so person. Much. Leona gets it. Sorry. <laughs> uh, but basically, what happens with blue merles and roans 
and red merles and red roans um, is instead of having fur that is one color is next to the other color, um, each individual hair is um, a singular color and kind of think about pixels, how up close pixels are different colors and then you, you have like red and white next to each other and then you zoom out and it makes pink. Right. That is what's happening with the fur of a blue roan, red roan, blue merle, red merle. Okay. Um, except it's white and kind of red or brown or white and black, which is what gets the blue color. Okay. Russian blue cats are not the same. That's just some weird blue silver nonsense that happens. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I don't, I, I can't tell you the genetic makeup of why that happens. Um, I know a little bit about the history of it. It just happened. And then people were like, we like this. Breed more. Um, also, I do want to give a shout out to the people in the chat who made multiple horse puns while <laughs> you were talking <laughs> about your horse painting. I, Gretchen. So uh, good job, guys. I appreciate them. We love it. Thank you. Excellent. Um, Not only are we a haven for miniature painters, we're a haven, we're a haven for, for miniature punsters. Well, and I don't think it's wrong to uh, talk about why you chose different colors. I think it's interesting oh, no. a lot of times instead of just like, I chose brown because a horse is brown. Especially since we're trying to make it a haunted guy. Absolutely fine. So, Dave, what's an update in your? Uh, okay, so on my guy, I've done the uh, done the base, which you can't quite see through all of the. There we go. All over there. Uh, I decided to make the uh, sort of the horns that it has. Um, I've matched the, the color of the base, so it's got a little continuity there. I've so at the moment I've painted the. Um, the tongue black. I'm going to come back and do some highlighting on that, and I've got to paint the teeth in. Uh, but what I'm going to do f now is on the uh, the parts of the the wings that aren't the membrane. I'm going to um, go and paint them with some uh, black mixed with the the flesh terrors red, so just to give a little bit of differentiation between the two areas. And then I'll probably go in and do some um, some highlights on the red. So I've got to do some highlights on the, the big floofy tail, uh, the membrane on the wings, and um, around the face to give that some extra depth. There. So that's what I've got going on. Nice. Josh Potter says, I watched a horse painting tutorial and the person used a hatching technique for highlighting the fur-like texture. All right, cool. Which I feel like, um, Dave, you talked about a little bit. Dave has done that before. Yeah, I think... Uh, when we painted um, Targaryen, not yeah, Targaryen. Yeah. No, Targaryen. It was uh, the... Oh, see, whatever. Dothraki. Dothraki, thank you. Yep. The part of the, the house Targaryen forces for... Yeah, Sunrise that's what confused fire. me, is technically they're the house Targaryen. Yeah. Let's talk about that. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, so it is a it is a good one. It just uh, adds that extra texture to the um, to the model because typically miniatures of horses are um, smooth. The, um, the fur texture is smooth. When I say the fur texture is smooth, like where you would find the fur is smooth on the miniature. So yeah, anything you can do to just to bump that um, texture kind of contrast up is good. One of the advantages um, of sort of being using that sort of rough and ready approach that I did earlier is that I don't have to be super careful with the um, painting in these the fingers, almost the fingers, I guess. Dragon wings. Claws. The wings. The wings. And you okay. have the membranes between the between the fingers. I don't know. This is a odd one, of course, because it has front legs as well. 
chat tell us what are the claws at the end of the dragon's wings? I dropped out of my biology major for, a, <laughs> for an arts degree. Creatures. I can't help you. <laughs> They but didn't I know study fantastical you, creatures in there? Come on. Come on. Where are the cryptid fans? I am a bit of a cryptid fan. But yeah. So Phalanges? That would be the the bones of the hands, I guess, yeah. I guess phalanges. Maybe they're claws. I think claws are at the end, but Claws and your your wing claws. Yeah. I don't know. But now, I guess, in there. And Did you just brush on the black on that? Pardon? Yeah. Did you, for the, yeah. I, it was a, a, a mix of um, the black and the, the uh, red. flesh terror's red. Oh, okay, yeah, cool. So, so you can see a little bit of the red underneath coming through. Yep. Not entirely black. I think if, I, if I'd gone for a solid black, I would have needed to uh, be very careful along the edges there. Oh, but I this, see what you're saying. Yeah. Hence the rough and ready approach. Very nice. Yeah. So, now to pop in and get a very fine brush and paint some. Which way we go? There we go. Some ivory onto these teeth. Okay. Look at that. And because uh, everything else around it is fairly dark, just immediately they stand out. There we go. Flip it over so I can do the other side. Tiny little teeth. You can see them. You see them? Yeah. Real well. Yeah, they uh, st do stand out quite a bit, which is nice. Also, Gretchen, Carl says I l he does like hearing why you choose colors. He's just not good at it. <laughs> <laughs> so. Just not doing sometimes it himself. Sometimes it's for fun reasons, and sometimes it's for silly reasons. Josh Potter says bat wings are actually the phalanges. Yeah. The toes and fingers. Cool. But not sure what they actually call the membrane. membrane. Not sure. They call the poop guano, though. <laughs> we do know that. Thank right? you. Um, <laughs> what was that Jerry Seinfeld movie? What was the witch? Uh, what's, what's the Jerry Seinfeld movie where he's like... A crazy guy. <laughs> I'm not sure. <laughs> it's not Jerry Seinfeld. That's why I'm getting the name wrong. Jim Carrey? Anyway. This is a good time. Moving on from my brain <laughs> fart. <laughs> we will talk about anything else. <laughs> anything else. Okay, folks. Now that it is October, though, I have to try and watch a scary movie every evening. Any uh, suggestions for my first one tonight? Scary or spooky? That'll scary, spooky, Halloweeny. Okay. Um, just so it'll save me like the fifteen minutes of scrolling through on demand, trying to find <laughs> one that I haven't seen. Say, Anybody I wants to make any like, suggestions? I always like Hocus Pocus. Right. And Halloween Town, our favorite family friendly ones. Not a house of a thousand corpses. Oh, uh, yeah, well, Not you so know. Much. Oh, Dave, look at the most recent comments from Chris and Spider Man. <laughs> <laughs> 15 <laughs> minutes of Coraline. Coraline will do it before you fall asleep. It's true. And then I, I like how Spider-Man <laughs> follows that with a full movie or something that you'll watch for 15 minutes. Um, let, let's say a full movie. But the great thing about so many um, horror films, particularly horror films made in the last 20 years, is that they're all about 80 minutes long. So don't have to try and 
should have sit through a two hour film. So anything that fits into that would be great. Maybe one week I should do all of the, or maybe two weeks to do all of the Texas Chainsaw Massacre films and remakes and that kind of stuff. Well, it looks like we have some good suggestions in the chat. Black Christmas, Dreamscape. Josh Potter has one of the finest bat preserves Ooh, about 30 miles Ghost from where I live. Ghost is fun. Hmm? 13 Ghosts. 13 Ghosts, that's true. Iliad. Yep. Original Halloween, or The Crow. Ooh. We've got Monster Squad or Young Frankenstein. Graham Sargent says Coraline is a horror movie for me. I have a phobia of buttons. Coraline is scary. To... It is. If you think about it, it is scary. Oh, yeah, yeah. Definitely. It's great. Man, I'd like to do some great stuff. Josh Potter says the scariest movie I know is Winnie the Pooh. Stuffed animals moving on their own is pretty creepy. <laughs> Say the heffalumps? The heffalumps are quite scary. Stuffed animals moving on their own does terrify me. That would definitely be a thing that I would... Also, someone said Young Frankenstein, which I agree with. Yeah. Well, um, Josh Potter, uh, how, do you, how do you feel about Toy Story? The Toy Story movies. I know a lot of young people that were terrified of Toy Story when it came yeah. out. Yeah, appar okay, I learned this about my friend. She never watched any of the Toy Story movies because they scared her as a kid. Really? So, and then she just, like, never watched, went back and, like, watched any of them. Right. <laughs> Which, like, that's fine, but I was, we're going to go watch them now. Right. That's cool. See, Toy Story didn't scare me Frank because... and Weenie? Is that a movie? What? Frank and Weenie? Frank and Weenie? Yeah. Yeah. That's Halloween. Um, toys Story didn't scare me because the toys had, like, morals, I guess. Um, Chucky terrified me. Which? Stuffies? No, no, Chucky. Chucky? Oh, okay. Yeah. Well, that, that was supposed to. Yeah. I, didn't, I never actually, like, fully watched it. Even just the, like, the previews for it. Terrified right. me as a kid. When huh. I used to work in an office, there was a uh, a fascination with the uh, not so much with the Leprechaun films, but part of the, there's a little song in one of the Leprechaun films. I can't remember which one. Might be Leprechaun Three, but it's like six more days to Halloween, Halloween, Halloween. Six more days to Halloween. That's incredible. Yeah. But there was a countdown during the the movie. David Moffat hey. says, my daughter is afraid of puppets, so any Muppets movie will do it. Which puppets is sad can because be scary. Muppets is incredible, and but I'm sad that Muppets your daughter is scared are, of them. Despite being monster puppets, M Muppets uh, scare me considerably less than actual puppets. That's like, fair. Ventriloquist dummies freak me out. Byron says the town that dreaded sundown, sundown, excuse me. Okay. Uh, someone said the Penny Dreadful series. That was Jason. Okay. Um, Mark says the stuff. The stuff. Are you eating it or is it eating you? <laughs> All right. <laughs> okay. We, there's a lot of really fun bad horror movies on Amazon. Halloween 3. <laughs> Legend of Boggy Creek. And I oh. might even be in a few. Uh -huh. Hey, shout out. <laughs> Birdemic? Birdemic? I've seen that one. Yeah. That's... Oh, Maybe Paranorman. Not. That one's really cute. Right, yep. I suspect that my, my daughters are going to watch the um, uh, Goosebumps. Series Goose of Bumps movies. Is really yes. Good. Okay. Literally, my friend and I have been watching them, and they're incredible. They're so good. I mean, they're like, 
pretty cheesy, but like they're 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 actually pretty scary for like a kids movie. Some of yeah. some of the like the goosebumps and the Are You Afraid of the Darks were actually scary. <laughs> <laughs> I watched the original um, Adam's Family film that came out. Well, it's probably not the original original, but I watched the the one from the '90s the other day. Right with uh, Raúl Julia. Yeah. Yeah. That's the um, the first film. There were the it was the TV series beforehand, but from the '60s, I think. Yes. But. Roger Moore says the car. An interesting 70s horror freaked me out as a kid. Cool. I love the names of horror movies. It's always like the fill in the blank. <laughs> <laughs> yep. And then it's scary. The ring. The grudge. Because it's not a car. The thing. It's not a thing. You're like, right. that's yes. not scary. <laughs> key said, I watched the new Adams Family cartoon movie, and it reminded me of the original show. Okay, cool. Oh, and to answer your question, Dave, apparently for Josh Potter, Toy Story does, he doesn't like it. Okay. Night at the Museum. Right. That's why I keep my Warlord Roman separate from my Knuckle Duster Cowboys. <laughs> okay, good, good. <laughs> Excellent. That's funny. Monster House. Oh, Monster House is cute. I liked Monster House. That was a good one. Oh, Chris says, awesome new minis just arrived. Cool. The MASH unit, mutants, and some post-apocalyptic stuff. Excellent. I'm sure that's supposed to be Warlord games. Yeah, I, I did say, yeah. I, yeah. I didn't say Warlog. <laughs> Although Warlord. Warlog is a great, you know. War, Warlog. I'm, I'm sure that's a, speaking of, uh, or going back to the um, Klingon. There you go. Thing. So that was from there. The Exorcist. That's what Graham said. It scared him as a kid. Yep. I've actually, um, I think one of the first times I came to the U.S. and came to the East Coast, I went, went to see The Exorcist Steps in uh, Georgetown in D.C. That was really cool. Oh, Van Helsing. That's a fun one. Yep. I liked Van Helsing the up until like the Buf Mufasa Ooh, the moment Wraith. in the end. But up till then, it's a very good romp, and I appreciate it. It's an aesthetically pleasing, spooky, yet not scary romp. And that's what right. I'm about. Right. That's my brand. <laughs> I, like the, uh, I like the scary stuff. I don't like getting too scared. Now, I will say this. As, like, an adult, whatever. But as a child, I could always handle, like... Um, creature features, I could handle those really well. As long as it was something I could fight. Right. Like, if I could rationalize in my brain how I would fight it. Right. As, you know, a nine-year-old. Um, then I wouldn't get scared. So vampires and werewolves and dinosaurs and aliens, that never got to me. As soon it as it became something that I couldn't fight, nope. Something a little bit more... Uh paranormal yeah that's that's why right. things like chucky would scare me as a kid because how do you fight chucky you smash it put him in the boiler um no the um for me it was uh stuff like um freddy from nightmare on elm street yep how do you fight there. freddy exactly you Nothing make ever sure actually can... works. They kept moving the goalposts. Like, in the first film, they're like, oh, as long as you're not, like, a descendant, then you're fine. So it wasn't scary. I was like, I wasn't born there. I was born of swamp people. They have their own horror movies. And I'm <laughs> immune to the Cajun horror movies, because I am Cajun. They wouldn't eat me. <laughs> they would say, bless you. Go on your way, child. Exactly. I'd show up, and they'd be, it'd be like that sca the moment in the horror movie where, like, the, the scary old man at, like, the gas station is like, don't come around these parts. Like, it'd be that moment. And in the Cajun horror films, I'd show up, and they'd be like, oh, don't come around these parts. And I'd be like, I'm visiting family. And they'd be like, go forth. <laughs> it's fine. Instantly, the clouds part. The sun comes out. <laughs> <laughs> Jason James said Toxic Avenger. 
I've seen Toxic Avenger. Some key said creep show. Um, so the trauma films are just special. Yeah. What, what what about the trauma films? Sorry. Uh, they're just special. They're fun. Gotcha. They're silly. Chris First. said we just watched Poltergeist with the kids. Oh, which which one? The original. I believe. Hmm. Which one, Chris? I did say that the uh, 2015 remake was on the other night, but I went past it. Moved past it. I actually ended up watching uh, Cabin in the Woods again. Oh, that's Oh, fun. I need to watch yeah. that. Yeah, you haven't seen that at all? No, I haven't. My friend, like, told me about it when it first came out, and I think I've seen a couple clips of it, just, like, being on TV. Yeah. But you, I haven't you, sat down and watched it. You totally need to see it. It is a it's a great film. But there's a, there's a moment in there with the... Uh, with that kind of the person telling them, essentially telling them to turn back. Yep. Like the the uh, the nasty guy who owns the gas station. Where they stop. But uh, I, if you haven't seen it, Leona, then I'll I won't go any further. No, it's okay. I mean, I basically know the story. Okay, cool. Because um, it's been a while, so people have talked about it. Yeah. David Moffat said, "Attack on Titan reminds me a lot of my childhood nightmares," which. Ooh. That's an anime, and oh, okay. that's Radio. fair. Basically, it's yeah. big monsters, and they eat people. Yep. Well, they eat children. That's Right. Yep. Oh, oh, Children of the Corn? Children of the Corn, yep. But this Chris one. says neither were very scary, sadly. Oh, Children of the Corn wasn't scary? Yeah, for Chris. Okay. Spider-Man said the early Stephen King movies... Yeah, like uh, Christine and Carrie. Great movies. Yeah, someone else said Carrie, the original. Oh, that was Byron. Yeah. Oh, the first Alien movie. Okay, yeah, I think the yeah. first Alien movie is like towing the line of like thriller horror. Where it's I'm not okay really that, horror. Though. It's definitely more just like thriller. I think it does a really great job at that, though. I love it. It was amazing. Yeah. I'm like Dave. I'm a fan. One of my um, one of the favorite sort of bits of trivia you know about that one, about the original Alien, is that the um, the for the the dinner scene when the um, alien bursts out, mm-hmm. uh, that the crew knew that something something was going to happen, but they didn't know what exactly was going to happen, and they didn't know how it was going to happen. So the look of shock and it's like terror and amazement on their faces, that's all real. Because they didn't know that... That's so cool. ...the alien was going to burst from his chest. They managed to keep that out of the, um, the script. Because I feel like a couple of them scream, and it sounds real. And oh, I, yeah, I yeah, think yeah. that's what gets you, is that you're like, oh my gosh, they're like screaming. Yep, yep, <laughs> totally real. Totally That's real. really cool. I'm glad that the they did that. Yep. Yeah, Ridley Scott knows what he's doing. Definitely, definitely I know, cool. Such a good director. But yeah, that's uh, that's definitely great. That's a good one. Yeah. Uh, also, someone said, "Do do do." Where do I? S- I miss it. Okay. Some key said, "My friend's young son was terrified of mummies being sent by vampires to kill him in his sleep." So I gave him a plant and told him that tannin leaves keeps them at bay. <laughs> nice. It's really clever. <laughs> Excellent. That's good. Uh, oh, no. J- uh, Spider-Man says, I can't think of that scene that you described, Dave, without seeing the Spaceballs parody. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's, that's fair, fair. enough, too. <laughs> That's fair enough, too. Yep, that's cool. <laughs> Hello, my baby. <laughs> Hello, <laughs> nice, <my darling. laughs> nice work, Sumki. Yeah. That is uh, spot on. The, um... Yep. Yeah, I'm trying to think of other sci-fi horror movies. Uh, the, one of the best ones is uh, Event Horizon. Oh, I haven't seen that. 
No, that's uh, that's a fantastic. Um, there you go. Oh yeah, look, Spider Man said Event Horizon. Event Horizon, All right. yeah. So I'm gonna watch it. Yep, definitely cool. The uh, there's part of it, uh, like a fairly significant part of it. Um, oh, but apparently, controversy. Some key said it has not aged well. Thoughts? Uh, I I think it has. There are some element, probably some elements of it that that haven't. But um, yeah, no, I think it's still worth uh, worth checking out. The um, there's part of it where it's kind of a um, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, just a, a great sort of visual rep representation of um, the warp from the um, Warhammer 40,000 universe. I mean, it's not connected at all to it, uh, but just has that great sort of uh, feel to it. Okay, well, people are just saying that the CGI is bad, which, like, I don't mind okay. that. That's fine. Yeah. Like, I can get over that. Yeah, it's, it's If that's it's, the only thing that hasn't aged well, I thought you meant, like, maybe some of the lines or some of the... Yeah. I don't know, plot points. Okay. And Carl says Event Horizon is a good three quarters of a movie. <laughs> the end, though, yeah. Yeah. But, uh, and Josh says, yes, the Event Horizon, the first foray into warp space before they discover Geller Fields. <laughs> but yeah. The Abyss. There's a movie I haven't seen in a long time. That's a pretty good one. All right, let's look at the rest of our minis. Also, Dave, you keep painting out of screen. It's fine. Um, mm -hmm. Let's look at the rest of the minis for today. How does that sound? That sounds great. Okay. So as I said earlier, uh, we choose miniatures from our Painting Happy Little Minis Facebook. Shout out to that. Make sure you go check it out and join. This month, we're going to be having like quite a few giveaways. So you're going to want to make sure you're tuning into that for a prompt tober. All right. Okay. Ooh. Nick Mendler with a snowy owl bear. Shout out to owl bears. Woohoo! Go owl bears. I this do is like owl bears. Hmm? I said I do like owl bears. Yeah. This one's great. Looks fantastic. I love the um, just that work around the face. The um, the bright white up against the uh, that black there and the so the feather work towards the uh, the edges of the face. Around the jowls. It looks good with the gold of the eye. Yeah, yeah. No, I think it looks it looks fantastic. Really nice work there, Nick. Good one. Oh wow! Speaking of snow. Orion. Orion. With their largest project to date. Yep, that is uh, that is awesome. I wonder if that's. Um, the thing I'm curious about is I wonder if that uh, like the giant's head is part of the original mini or if it's taken from like a like a 75 millimeter miniature so it's going to look oh, a lot Oh, I see what you're saying. Yeah. Yeah. But I suspect it is part of the original mini. But uh no, it looks fantastic. Really uh yeah, very cool. Great colors in there. Nice work on the um the icicles as well. The blood the snow. on the ice. <laughs> yeah. I actually really like the way that he did the blood on the ice because it, it would coagulate like that. Yeah, yeah. And also um, sort of as it seeps in and does that um, that same sort of thing with the, the red on the white snow will look um, pinkish, start to sort of spread out as it uh, sort of leaks out through the snow. But no, looking fantastic. I think the skin tones on both the the warrior and the X giant um, look fantastic. Good I like job. The, uh, hmm. Yeah. Good job. Great work, Ariane. Paul Wardle, with um, a photo that on the left is the older mini that they painted right. when they first started, and yep. then on the right is a miniature that they did like a couple weeks ago. So. All right. Fantastic. It's, it's always cool to sort of see shots like this where, um, 
you get to see how somebody has come along and what their, their painting's like. I saw one on um, online earlier today where somebody posted the first mini that they painted in July, like three months oh, ago. Wow. To the mini that they, the, like a mini that they were painting now. It's basically the same miniature. They were doing a painting a second one. Um, not the second miniature that they'd painted, but they'd learned a lot. And it was like, this is really interesting because I really like parts of the first one and I really like parts of the one that they were working on now. But uh, it, it's always, it is cool to see that, that sort of progress. I think one of the um, the biggest things that I'd, I'd say here is the the neatness that Paul's getting. Yeah, now, the clean the, lines. Um, yeah, those, the, the clean lines in between the different areas, so between the fur and the, the skin or... Um, the fingers and the club, uh, but yeah, I think it was looking great. Great progress there, well, there, Paul. I think, um, I think they both look cool. I like it. Very nice. Ren with a Red Sonia inspired paint job. I'm looking Ooh. for Red Sonia. Have you seen her? <laughs> it's my favorite line from that movie. It's the only one I can remember. But. Uh, no, this is looking great. Um, I love that uh, that red hair is looking awesome. Um, it's not garishly red. It's um, and you've got the, those highlights sort of reflecting in, in nice places on there. Looking very cool. I think that uh, the sword having that sort of bright silver on the sword along the top there, and also on the rim of the shield is helping sort of frame the face and the hair. Yeah, that's a good point. Doing a great, great job of that. I'm not sure if it's, it's the, I think the black background is probably helping a lot with that because the underside of the shield is in such sort of extreme shadow there. But, uh, but yeah, I think it looks cool. It's nice, nice work there. Robert Malik. What, it should say first attempt at a comic book comic style. Comic book style, right? So this is um, a very think, good attempt at a comic book style. I would not say attempt. I'd say you'd done, you would you've done it. You've done it. Completed a comic book style. Yep. So I think we talked. Did we talk? Mention this last week. We talked yeah, a I'm pretty bit sure about comic book styles because yeah. we were talking about Wonder Woman. Right. And yeah. We were being talking able to do about the, comic book right. style on those those Wonder on Woman those minis, miniatures. Yeah. No, that's a good. Um, Good question, but uh, yeah, you can see the that side of, that type of approach, which is the all the musculature is defined by those thin black lines. Um, the black lines around the um, the veins that are sort of popping up on his arms. There, uh, I think it, I meant to mention last week when we talked about it. Uh, Mike Cousins of uh, Epic Duck Studios uh, is probably top on my list for folks who do the comic book style. Um, so Robert, if you um, haven't checked out Epic Duck Studios on YouTube, definitely um, check Mike out. Uh, but yeah, I think uh, as Gretchen said, you've, you've done it. You've done a, done a very cool job there. Nice work. Robert Weston, first minis I've ever painted for, so there are multiple ways to read this. First yep. minis I've ever painted for Armada, or first minis I've ever painted, they're for Armada. The I believe I know Robert Weston, unless there are multiple Robert Westons. But if it, if it is the Robert Weston that I know, then I don't think he's painted minis before. Oh, cool. Yeah. The, the, place, the placement of the comma would suggest that these are the first minis that he's ever painted that also, uh, and they are for Armada. So Star Wars Armada. Very cool. But uh, yeah, looking really good. I think um, that the um, it looks like a, like a red line of um, I guess windows or lights, kind of uh, across the front of the ship there. Um, look very cool. I think uh, painting or repainting um, ships for space combat games. Is uh, is definitely a lot of fun. Do you still have the uh, X-wing? I do. 
the X Wing repaint. I do still have the X Wing repaint. Excellent, excellent. I can't remember what I painted on that show. Hmm. But uh, yeah, no, I think uh, very cool, Robert. Nice work. Keep uh, keep enjoying your uh, painting of the ships. Looking good. Ryan Cook with Rufus, Isabel the Bard, and the Necromancer. Mouncer. That's very cool. I tried, folks. Pardon? I tried, but I failed to pronounce (laughs) Necromancer. Mouncer. Nice. These are very cool. I wonder where they're from. But, uh,. Yeah, they're just the the dog isn't from the dungeon and dog dungeons and doggos. Or doggies and dungeons set. But um yeah, I don't know. I think uh fantastic job um to get started. The highlights on the on the dog with the uh those hatching lines to get that texture, show off that texture, look very cool. And I love just love the I love the miniature of the cat, the necromancer. <laughs> But oh, also, the, pe- the cat is from Cats and Catacombs. Uh, David says the cat's from Cats and okay. Catacombs for certain. Yeah, yeah. I think the uh, it had that that great sort of feel, and all. And also, <laughs> I've only just noticed the so the horns are just like uh, Tim. The oh. horns on uh, from Tim from um, yeah. Monty Python and the Holy Grail. <laughs> there are those who call me Tim. Yes. So if we were to paint those black and give them a blue cloak. But uh, no, I think that looks fantastic. Um, Ryan's done an awesome job here. Um, yeah, just very cool. The bar oh, is Dave, I just awesome. made a pun without realizing. I oh, said no. it would be perfect. Perfect. You just need to roll your R there. But uh, no, nice work. Excellent, Ryan. Good one. Last mini for today. Teddy. Oh, this isn't right. This is the wrong picture. Wrong picture. They had talked about metal coming off their minis, but this is actually their picture. So. Okay, it's but just, it's just this it's just isn't a, the one that had metal coming off of it. Had had the paint coming off the metal, right? Yeah. But uh, yeah, this one's looking very cool. I'm really liking the um. The skin tones, the skin colors there, and the. I guess not, not so much tattoos, but. Um, those raised elements, brands, patterns, designs, swirls. 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 Uh, Maybe they're tattoos? They look very cool. No, they're not tattoos. No. Because they're raised. Yep. There'll be some sort of uh, very cool. Like, I'm not sure. Magic I'm not sure what that would thing. be. But no, uh, I think it's, it's looking really good, Teddy. Very nice. Uh, but to answer the question about um, getting paint to stick on metal minis, uh, although metal minis, uh, metal miniatures have less give and less flex than plastic and uh, and resin, so paint itself is going to rub off a little bit um, more often. Um, I think gotcha. the mini that Teddy was showing there was a, basically a, at the bottom of a cloak. There was a sort of point where the cloak came together and. A bit of paint had rubbed off the, that corner. Yes. Um, so I think the the best thing to do there is, uh, and with all the metal miniatures that I work with, I prime them first with a spray primer, so you get a nice sort of solid um, bond on there. Ritual ritual scarification. Sorry. That's kind of what I was saying. thinking. That's I just what I meant. Couldn't to say. think of the word. Scarification. Uh, but yeah, um, spray primers are best. Uh, the same sort of spray primer that I'd use on metal or, um, or plastic or resin. Um, when you're painting the model, make sure you've got it on some sort of holder. Um, it can be something like this, or I think you work with um, pill bottles with blue tack. Uh, just anything that can where you can avoid touching those corners um, or the, the point, the sticky out of it mm-hmm. of the mini. Uh, and then once you have painted the mini, uh, hit it with uh, spray um, varnish, spray matte varnish. So you could either go with something like 
uh, a Testa's dull coat or a GW's uh, Munitorium varnish. Uh, the Army Painter have a great anti-shine matte varnish. So lots of different things you could use there. Uh, if you've got a model that has a lot of um, metallics on it, uh, you might want to hit the model with uh, the varnish first and then paint the metallics afterwards so you don't lose that shine. Um, or you can hit them with um, hit it with a gloss varnish and then hand paint on a matte varnish in the other areas. Leave that sort of gloss varnish on the um, on the metal. So nice. There would be the ways that I would go to um, stick uh, make paint stick on metal miniatures. One uh, one other thing as well to check with metal miniatures because uh, they are done in. They used to be rubber molds, but now they're typically silicon molds. Um, Sometimes uh, people use powders as a mold release. So you might find some, uh, some talcum powder on there um, or something like that. Just check the model, brush it off with a, an old toothbrush or wash it off um, to make sure that it, you've got a nice clean surface to do your priming on. So they would be the hints and suggestions for um, making paint stick to metal miniatures. Thank you. Very nice. No worries. In our last hmm. 10 minutes. 10 minutes? 10 whole minutes? Oh, man, this is not going to get done in 10 minutes. That's okay. Yeah. That's okay, though. Cause... We are going to check in with Gretchen and see what she's doing. Excellent, because I'm done. I'm done. <laughs> um, because you know why so I'm, do you know why I'm finished? Up. You know why I'm finished? Contrast paints? I only tried, con uh, one, A, contrast paint. B, I only tried to paint one minute this week. I didn't, <laughs> True, I didn't try to paint did. two. Hurry. So uh, I'll just sit back now. Let's have a look at what Gretchen's working on. So <laughs> let's see if I can turn this here. So you can see that, um, you can see the back half here that's dried all nice and matte. And this bit is still wet. Um, but it is a very, very dark, inky, black, just very, barely vaguely blue. And uh, hopefully that will carry on through the rest of the mini as it dries. Uh, and then the eyes of the horse are nice and glowy. There we go. Nice. And the, uh, the tail end has that bit of glow because hopefully, uh, as you can see, I have yellow on the head here. Whenever that is complete and kind of... Cool. hitting different points it looks like it's a little bit of extra glow from that um and then the the uh the tack of the horse his bridle and his saddle and everything that's just a very dark leather but it has warm tones to it so that it's not lost against those cool tones because i know one of the questions has how to keep things not muddled so i'm doing that by trying to contrast tones not Value. Oh, you get uh, temperature, temperature yes. contrast. Yep. Um, because if I contrast it with how light or dark it is, then I run the risk of getting rid of any glowy effect because what's going to keep it glowy is that contrast. Yeah, the, the uh, tonal um, contrast. So yep. by keeping this as l the lightest bits on the horse and everything else, horse on the headless horseman, on the mini, um, Hopefully it'll keep those looking as if they're glowing from within, and then everything else will remain very, very dark colors. Um, and we'll see if it all works. <laughs> In theory, it should work. In, In theory, theory, it is a very good idea. Yep. I think it's cool. Uh, so, I look forward yay. to seeing it. So we'll be able to do some work, more work on it next week. Yeah. Yes. I actually do have the um, miniature spinner set up. Oh, yeah. I don't know if it's going to, because I set it up for the Wonder, Wonder Woman one, so you might need to uh, back it up a little bit. Adjust. Yep. Okay. It is available. Hooray. For your and the best enjoyment. Bit is I haven't even used true white on this yet. I've only been using off-white. Off-white? Stuff. Um, and it already has that nice kind of glowy vibe. Put that on there in a sec. 
One of the things that uh, I hadn't quite noticed before, but as I was reaching through to get different sections of the, the model, little tiny bits of paint on the uh, the translucent section. So we'll see how that goes. It is now. I have little tiny bits of paint on my translucent section too, but I can just paint that black. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> uh, That's yeah. true. Oh. It's nighttime now. It's nighttime in this. We've been here that long. Oh, can you move so. the camera up a little bit, Dave? Sure. The webcam. I think I can. I think I can. Yeah, you might have to just kind of move it. And just the legs. How's I'll, that looking? I'll put it on. Just uh. There we go. Okay. That's much better. What's the? I don't know what's in the backdrop. I just have to keep moving things. Is that all right, or is it too high now? There you go. Let me just focus it, and then we should be good. Excellent. Slight angle on it. Let's just... Maybe a little brighter. There we go. How do you want to do it? That's good. Yeah, that's pretty close to the, to the colors. So yeah, I think it yes, turned out pretty well. Yes, just take those minis for a spin. Less. Sorry, could you say that again? Take those minis for a spin. <laughs> nice one, Sumki. Excellent. Should I play a music, some music? Possibly. That's what Spider-Man said. Singing, Singing time. time. <laughs> Byron asked, uh, new brushes, should I clean them first? Uh, I think whenever I get a new brush out and sort of falling off, I usually just pull the cap off, rinse it out in some water. Dry it off and sort of get to it. Uh, I don't think you really need to go through and do any uh, brush cleaning as such, like uh, using a brush soap. But it, you can if you want to. Uh, it's probably not necessary for most brushes. <laughs> so you said whenever Dave gets a new brush, he just licks it clean. Yes, as if I were a cat. And this was my back. <laughs> it's your go. life. Yes. <laughs> but uh, yeah, actually, I had uh, an order of three size one broken toad brushes arrive uh, yesterday. So I'm pretty excited to bust those out. And soon I'll be getting some of the um, broken toad Fugazi brushes. I'm going to try those out. Um, so, brushes I usually use are Kalinsky Sable hair. Okay. So, uh, the Kalinsky Sable is not actually a Sable. Um, it's another kind of um, muskrat or something like that. Uh, but uh, the Fugazi brushes from Broken Toad are ones that are... are Basically, synthetic hair that tries that uh, is basically created to mimic uh, natural fiber hairs, uh, natural fiber brushes. So, um, yeah, if Chris can get that working and working well, then people won't have to um, shave sables anymore. Kaminsky samples. Dave Moffat says licking your brushes instills loyalty in them. <laughs> instills loyalty. <laughs> this is true. <laughs> cool. I said, uh, I've never had the white hair, I've only had a sable. No, it says unless they are used for oil paints. Okay, so it instills slow betrayal and with assassination through slow poison. Yes. Or it could be fairly quick, I guess. If I was using a lot of like cadmium whites. <laughs> that would be bad. Very bad. But indeed, yes. I I, I think also if it was um, if they were oil paints that I would stop licking them fairly quickly. Just yeah. No, no doubt they would taste terrible. Terrible. <laughs> 
among other dangers of licking oil paint. Yeah, I mean, it, it'd be the taste. <laughs> just, just for you, it'd be the taste. It'd be the taste, yep. Yes. Very good. <laughs> Sorry, folks. Just who I am. <laughs> well, that about wraps it up for us. Yeah, I think it does. Um, have we decided on the first prompt? Yeah, what, what should our first prompt, guys? What hey. should it be? Quick. So suggestions we had were undead. Mm -hmm. uh, we had robots. Mm -hmm. We had Victorian. Uh, Victorian. Uh, a Victorian era. Uh, and cults. I... And tanks. And tanks. tanks. Don't forget tanks. about tanks, y'all. Sure thing, Dave. <laughs> Dave Muffet <laughs> suggesting tanks because he's already painted a bajillion of them. Um, I like I like the idea of kicking it off with maybe undead because I feel like that could be accomplished via colors or miniatures or that kind of stuff. Yep. Um, so no one has to immediately run out and get anything. But if you do want to, you totally can. Um, yes, we're giving you permission. <laughs> we are enabling yes. your purchase of <laughs> miniatures. It could be the Headless Horseman. Um, or the Nightmare Dragon. Or the Nightmare Dragon. Uh, so yeah, I think I think Undead. Let's do that one. Undead? Yeah. Undead. First prompt, Undead. Um, we're also going to put up the prompt and the uh, rules and all of the details in the Painting Happy Little Minis Facebook group. So make sure you have joined that. Um, and we'll also do a giveaway um, every week as well. And we'll pull from those people who are doing the prompt tobers. We will. Yeah. So Indeed. Get painting. Exactly. Get spooky. We do have, we do, we've got a prize for each week, haven't yes. we? Yes. Uh, so some of those are going to be prize what we're painting week. today. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Um, awesome. So make sure to look for that post in the group. Join the group if you are not part of the group and get painting. Yep. Excellent. And on that note, um, that is... <laughs> uh, that's us. Uh, for today. That's a, such a sad pumpkin. Um, oh, poor David. Uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, cool. that's all I have for you guys. Excellent. I'm I Gretchen. I'm Dave. And we'll see you at your friendly local game store. <laughs> <laughs>